Hello there and welcome to Black Jackal Gaming. We've seen a lot of talk about AdMech being trashed here, so we're going to have a look through the index and take a look at any of the issues. So we'll be looking at potential broken combos, missing keywords, how expensive some of the units are, and the fact that the army rules are a bit on the stagnant side and the detachment rules just a little bit weird. We'll take a look at the army rule first. So at the start of the first battle round, your opponent can choose whether they decide to have all the units in the deployment zone as battle shocked, or each of these units can take D3 mortal wounds on a 4 plus. Now since this is in your opponent's hand, it really allows them to take a look at the board, whether they're going first or second and how it's going to benefit them and, and how they can mitigate any potential damage this has done to them. It's going to have a minimal or no effect against some elite armies such as knights when you've got potentially three or four large units that are taking one or two mortal wounds, if that. You've also got to bear in mind things such as the missions where the opponent can just decide not to keep anything within his deployment zone. Or if there's just one uh, one objective that he requires to hold on to, he can easily put something on that objective out, out of line of sight and have something that can shrug mortal wounds. So it's basically just going to sit there for the entire game. Now this really prevents you from um, activating part of the detachment rule as well for getting AP when the enemy's unit is within their own deployment zone because this really encourages them just to hold down their home objective and leave their deployment zone to minimize your army and detachment rule and really stagnate what your options are. Next up is the detachment rule. Now what this does is that you can choose one or two things at the start of your command phase. <clears throat> You can either put yourself into a defensive standpoint where you will gain the heavy keyword for remaining stationary and you will reduce AP on any attacks coming into your units when they're in your own deployment zone or you can change to the slightly more offensive option where you can gain the assault keyword on all of your weapons and you can improve the AP on any enemy units that you're targeting within their own deployment zone. So on the face of it, it seems quite flexible. You can decide to set up defensively, reduce AP and get an extra uh, one plus on your ballistic skill. Or you can go more offensive, really push on, advance and shoot and have additional AP into your enemy. Unfortunately, this is really relying on the deployment, whether you go first or second, what the mission is and how your, your opponent can just set up to mitigate any of this. The fact that you're already a low AP and low uh, amount of shots army means that standing still is really just going to have you stand in your, your deployment zone and allowing the, the enemy just to take the, the mid board, take control of all the objectives and leave you slightly more um, in a better defensive position. But that's it really. Or you've got the other option of trying to push on, get that extra AP, hope you can get line of sight because they can just stay out line of sight of you and hope you can just run forward and shoot it's quite a glass cannon army that is really much of a cannon so running forward heedlessly and just trying to get extra shots off isn't going to be in the best of interest for you and there are ways for this to be mitigated if they have a, a lot of units in strategic reserve or they just put them out of line of sight there's also stealth which is going to give you minuses to hit lone operative where you can't even target them so there's ways to mitigate any damage you can do turn one really like I mentioned previously, there's a lack of AP throughout the entire army. Uh, most weapons they lost the, the minus 1 AP or minus 2 AP that they had in 9th edition. The strength of weapons for infantry, infantry overall is quite low, generally being uh, for the small arms, uh, strength 3 or 4. And for the heavier stuff, you're more looking at 7s, 8s and 9s, so not the most punchiest of things unless you're running more a vehicle heavy list. This is, this is already really impacting you if you're having to stand still to gain that additional um, plus one to hit that you lost from 9th edition. And on top of all this, there's some basic keywords missing from weapons throughout the index. There's not many units that have the precision keyword that is only four. Two of these are your, your battle line units, which aren't the, the greatest. They're hitting on fours. It's one shot per um, unit each, 
and it's only strength five so it's not exactly going to push through uh, many characters you're not even going to threaten them with this especially for the price of the units overall there's rust stalkers that look quite good but they are only in melee so you've got difficulties actually getting them into a position to use precision and then you've got dragoons which whilst they do look very good they've got some very interesting keywords and um, they only have one shot with precision and it's 75 points a model so they're not going to do all that much damage there are some anti-keywords throughout the, the index. They are a bit light on things. It's mostly for infantry. And then you've got a couple of units that have um, for anti-vehicle. Um, and the the improvement to what you would be wounding on in most cases, especially infantry, you're only going up by one. So it's not the most useful. But what really hurts it is that it's lacking the devastating keyword. So you're not pushing these wounds into mortal wounds like other armies are capable of doing. They've also got this massive tax on twin linked. They're one of the armies that probably be mostly affected by it because they have a lot of twin linked weapons. So they've lost the ability to fire uh, multiple shots, but now they get to reroll one of their wounds, which they're usually wounding on twos or threes anyway into the targets. So having that ability to reroll isn't as significant if you just had you know, two shots anyway. Finally, and most confusingly, the Dune Rider lacks the firing deck keyword, which is a bit weird because it's a completely open top vehicle. Um, maybe they've they've overvalued the shooting power of Admec, so didn't think that they should have a firing deck. But overall, it just makes this vehicle pretty pointless to take because you're not able to utilize firing deck like all other armies can. And the points across the board are slightly on the high side and ridiculous for some things. Say, for example, we take a look at the Dune Rider, which has a, a very similar output and damage to an Impulsor. It doesn't have the ability to give itself a four up invulnerability save, and it's not as tough. And not only that, it's paying the same points and it's lacking the firing deck keyword, which the Impulsor has. So overall, it's a much worse option. There's also a massive tax on the troop choices. They really overvalue the ability to, to have sticky objectives and the scout keyword. Um, they've really paid over the top for these, such as the ranges being 125 points, which is slightly ridiculous. Um, for a unit that can only be taken in squads of 10, so no longer 5, 10, 15 or 20 really, which they'd want to be taken in, you've now got this unit that can stand on an objective, will die instantly because they don't have enough uh, models there. It's pointless giving them any buffs because they're going to die so quickly. And then, well done, they, st they stuck that objective, but the next turn the opponent just comes and takes it anyway. Then you've got units such as the Dragoons, which they look great. They've got some really good abilities. They're jam-packed with keywords, but they are very expensive. They're 75 points a model, which is really paying a tax on what the keywords can do and the damage output they can give out because they can do a lot of damage. However, it's quite uh, direct damage into individual units. They're not something that can carry an army just on their own. And as mentioned previously, the twin link tax, they've lost shots, the points have gone up usually across the board, and they can re-roll um, what would be a low wound roll anyway, so it's not that useful for them. Some of the character units are in really weird position, such as the tech priest, which lack the faction keyword, so they can't get the, the army buff, so getting the um, minus one AP and the heavy keyword, or getting the assault keyword with the additional AP. I really don't understand why this is being missed out on the tech priests. I could understand if it was the, the detachment ability because they were expecting the, the tech priest to have a separate detachment in the future, so they're going to build into that. But to lose out on the armor rule is very strange. The fact that most of the tech priests can't actually hear vehicles, they've really been limited in what they can and can't do. And a lot of the buffs they give out are a little bit pointless because they're on units that are just going to not survive for long enough to make use of the the expensive buff that you're given to them so it's pointless even giving them an enhancement on top of that because they're just not going to stay alive and you have no ability to reattach them to a new unit and um, some of the abilities for some of the units such as the stalkers and that the abilities are really tied into being near an ending movement to a battle line unit so they've added an extra tax onto these abilities because there's limitations built in 
by the fact that you've got to be near to or move near to a battle line unit that's going to really struggle to stay alive in the game so you're not going to get maximum use out of these abilities and it really limits how you use these these units and when you're going to bring them into the battle now the units that have these buffs they aren't even giving them the greatest buffs a lot of the time anyway such as they're given the ability to to move again but instead of being uh, a lower movement it then becomes a slightly higher movement so it's not like it's a really powerful ability that they're going to be using. So how do we fix Admech for 10th edition? Well there's two options, there's the light touch which GW generally goes around unless they just want to absolutely tank uh, an army. So the light touch really would be give, given the tech um, priest the faction keyword so they can bonus from the, the army rule. And to remove the deployment restriction from the army rule, so you don't have to be within your deployment zone to reduce AP, and your uh, opponent's unit doesn't have to be within their own deployment zone for you to gain additional AP. That's not the strongest of buffs, but it will give them a little bit move in the right di direction and give them a little bit more play and flexibility on how you can approach the game, your strategy within the game, and the units you can potentially take. Now, the more hardline... Um, improvement you can give to them the really swing in the bat to try and move them right up the rankings is you could use the above but as well as that you need to reduce some of the points across the board so the battle line units i think you could comfortably bring them down by 20 points and they're still probably a touch on the expensive side adding the fire index to the june rider so it can actually be used and you've got a little bit more mobility with your your small arms fire they could lower the dragoons points because i'm a big fan of the Dragoons, I think is a really good model. I really like the data sheet. I think it's quite interesting what they can and can't do. But they are very expensive coming in at 75 points. So to knock them down 10 points. There's some other units you can look at as well, which you can knock them down 5 or 10 points to bring them more in line to the damage or utility you get out of them. And there's also things like you can remove the battle line restrictions on abilities. So some of them you would keep hold of, like um, I believe one of the Catafron units, if, if, it's, if it's within... Um, a certain distance of a battle line unit it does get a buff for rerolls which is quite nice so you could potentially look at keeping ones like that but all the ones that are to do with, with movement um, having them tied into being near a battle line unit isn't really that useful because you're, you're trying to springboard some of these units as far forward as you can but then you're restricted in the movement just by getting the battle line so a lot of the time by being within the order of the battle line unit you're actually not using as far moving as far as you could anyway so the buff is actually not to the maximum that you could have taken so it really hamstrings you for some units having that battle line restriction and then there's just little tweaks that can be done say for example the uh, cybernetica data smith now when he joins the the castellans they gain the infantry keyword so now they are uh, susceptible to anti-infantry anti-walker and anti-vehicle keywords so there's a lot of of guns in the across the the rest of the armies that are going to be wounding them on twos threes and fours instead of matching their toughness which is relatively high so it makes them very easy to actually take on because this character is joining the the unit and giving it an additional keyword that can be targeted so we changed his abilities to an aura rather than being with the unit then at least he can still buff them along the way without actually weakening them overall as well. Thank you for watching the video. If you have any comments, then pop them below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video, then please hit the like button as it greatly helps the channel. Hit the subscribe button to see any future Warhammer content. Take it easy and see you next time for more grim darkness from the 41st millennium.